Hey guys, in this video, you'll learn how to create and manage service endpoints to connect to PaaS services in Azure. As an enterprise organization, if you are concerned about the data exposure on the public internet when accessing Azure PaaS services such as storage account, Azure SQL, then service endpoints helps to solve this problem. Here are the topics we are going to cover. First, I will talk about the overview of service endpoints. I'll start with the problem statement and how service endpoints can help us. I will list out the different Azure PaaS services that support service endpoints. I will also talk about how service endpoints secures these Azure PaaS services, even though these PaaS services have basic firewalling feature. I will then create a service endpoint and secure the connection between a VM and a storage account. Before we talk about service endpoints, let's understand the problem statement here. Assume that you have an Azure subscription where few Azure VMs are hosted in a few subnets of your VNet. Let's say you also have an Azure PaaS service, for example, storage account, and some data is stored in your storage account that you need to access from your Azure VMs. Now, all resources in a VNet can communicate outbound to the internet by default even without a public IP. Azure PaaS services such as Azure SQL databases, Azure storage accounts, and many others are public internet facing services by default. So these VMs right here can communicate with the internet by default. With public IP, you can communicate inbound with these Azure VMs. With NSG or firewalls, you can control both inbound and outbound network traffic. Anyone with appropriate credentials can access the storage account from the internet by default. Anyway, coming back to our scenario, the storage account in Azure is a PaaS service that is a public internet facing service. Our VMs in these subnets of our VNet with appropriate credentials can also communicate with the Azure PaaS service such as storage account. Now without service endpoints, the connection from my Azure VMs to this storage account would go through the internet. Because these services are exposed to the internet, anyone can potentially access your Azure services. Also before service endpoints, to secure the connectivity between Azure VMs and the storage account, firewall rules were added on the storage account where the client IPs or the external IPs of your Azure VMs or on-premises servers were added to this list. The external IP is typically the public IP which is assigned to your network by your ISP. But the service endpoints provide direct connectivity to your Azure PaaS services from your subnet in your VNet. So they act like they are on the same virtual network. Service endpoint secures the network connection from your Azure VNet to Azure PaaS services since the network traffic will remain on the Azure Backbone network and doesn't go out to the internet. Although you have an option to add your client IP address or your on-premises network IP range to the firewall list of the Azure SQL database to allow access to the database, it is still recommended that you use service endpoints. You can see in the screenshot, I've added my client IP address, which is 43.247.158.8. My client IP is my laptop's external IP address assigned to my router by my ISP. I've also added my on-premises network IP range to access this Azure SQL database. But using a service endpoint for SQL database restricts access to specific virtual network providing greater isolation and reducing the attack surface. Moreover, like I mentioned before, service endpoints uses Microsoft uh, Backbone Network instead of internet for communication between your subnets and these Azure services. Let me list out the different Azure services for which uh, service endpoints are available. To start with, you have Azure Storage, Azure SQL Database, Azure Cosmos DB, Azure Key Vault, Azure Service Bus, 
Azure Data Lake Storage Generation 1, Azure Synapse Analytics, Azure Database for Postgres SQL Server, Azure Database for MySQL Server, Azure Database for MariaDB, Azure Events Hub, Azure App Service, Azure Cognitive Service, Azure Container Registry, which is in public preview. So you can see here on the right side, when you add or edit a subnet in your VNet, you'll see an option for service endpoints and selecting the dropdown will allow you to select the Azure services, which are showing as Microsoft resources. Also service endpoints can be enabled for multiple PaaS services. All right, let's jump into the demo of creating the service endpoints. But before that, let's look at the lab environment which I have. I have an Azure subscription with one VNet, VNet1, and two subnets in it, subnet1 and subnet2. Subnet1 as a VM, VM1, and subnet2 as a VM, VM2. I have a storage account, VCBB storage account1, which has a file share in it with some text files. Both these VMs are accessing the files of this file share hosted in the storage account VCBB storage account one using SMB file share mounted on these VMs. The connection is established via the internet and no service endpoints are currently being used. So let me show you that. So I've opened a bastion host on VM one and you can see we have a file share mounted. And if I open it, you can see some text files in this file share. This is on VM1 and you can see the same thing on VM2. All right, I can also create some text files in this file share. So I'll open up notepad. I'll say text three and I'm going to save it into the file share. And I'm going to name this as text three. I'm going to close this and if I come back here in VM1, I can see text three. And if I go to the Azure portal and open my storage account, click on file shares, click on file share one, and I can see text three.txt in here as well. And if I go back to the storage account and scroll down and click on networking under security plus networking, you can see under firewalls and virtual networks for the public network access, it is currently enabled from all networks. So I can connect to this storage account from public internet. So this means anyone with appropriate storage credentials can connect to the storage account from public internet. So if you want to restrict the access to the storage account only to VM1 and VM2, I'm going to click on enable from selected virtual network and IP address. And if I scroll down, under firewall, I have an option to add the client IP address of my virtual machine. And this would typically be the external IP of your VM, which is assigned by your ISP. So in my case, these two VMs are Azure VMs. And if I open up this website, whatsmyipaddress.com, it will show the external IP of this VM, which is assigned by Microsoft, which is 52, 186, 149, 225. And this is for VM1. And if I go to VM2, it is 40.88.47.20. So I'm going to add these two IP addresses, 52.186.149.225, 40.88.47.20. And I'm going to click on save. So now, we just restricted the access to the storage account only to these two VMs, VM1 and VM2. But in this demo, I am going to create a service endpoint and associate that with the subnet. And what it will do is that it will stop the existing connections to the storage account via internet and establish a direct network connection to the storage account using Microsoft Backbone Network. This means only VM1 can access the storage account and not VM2 because we are going to associate the service endpoint to subnet 1 only and not subnet 2. When you enable a service endpoint, you restrict the flow of traffic and enable your Azure VMs to access the PaaS service directly from your private IP address space. Before I create the service endpoint and associate with subnet 1, 
let's look at the effective routes on the VNIC for VM1 which is connected to subnet 1. So I have opened up virtual machine 1 and click on networking tab and click on the networking interface. Now on the left side scroll all the way down and click on effective routes under help. You can see the routes listed for the VM before creating the service endpoints and we can see there are no routes added for service endpoints. These are just the default routes. Alright, now let's create these service endpoints. There are two ways to create a service endpoint. Let me show you the first way. I will open up my VNet, VNet1 and click on service endpoints under settings. This is where you'll create a service endpoint, select the Azure Pass service and associate with the subnet. So click on add and in the add service endpoints blade, select the pass service that you would like to connect to. For this demo, I will select Microsoft Storage and I will skip the service endpoint policies for this demo. For the subnets, you can select multiple subnets from where you would like to connect to the storage account. But for this example, I will select only subnet 1 as it is the only subnet that is going to connect to the storage account. And if you click add, it will create a service endpoint which will then get associated with the subnet subnet 1. But I'm going to close this and show you another way to create a service endpoint. I'm still inside my VNet, VNet 1 and I'll click subnets under settings. You can see both my subnets here, subnet 1 and subnet 2. I will select subnet 1 and in the subnet 1 window, I'll scroll all the way down and you can see service endpoints up here. And if I click on the drop down for services, I can select Microsoft Storage and click on Save. So this will create the service endpoint and associate this subnet, subnet 1, with the service endpoint. Alright, it is done. I can follow this process to create multiple service endpoints to either different subnets or if you would like to connect to a different pass service. Now if I come back to service endpoints, you can see a service endpoint has been created. Another thing about the service endpoints is that both the VNet and the Azure pass service which you would like to communicate via service endpoint must be in the same region. For example, if the VNet is located in the East US region, then the pass service for storage account must also be located in the same East US region. But in my case, uh, you can see the location, it says East US as well as West US and that is because of uh, the replication which has been set on the storage account. By the way, service endpoints are free of cost. There are no charges for using service endpoints. Alright, the second part of the demo is to configure the storage account. So I'll go back to home and I'll select my storage account VCBB storage account 1. Under settings, click on networking. And now under firewall and virtual networks, I've already selected enabled from selected virtual networks and IP addresses, which will restrict the access to specific networks. I will now click on add existing virtual network under virtual networks. In the add networks blade, it is already selected to my subscription, which is pay as you go. For the virtual networks, I will select my VNet, VNet1. I will select my subnet, subnet1 which has been associated with the service endpoint that we created and I'll click on add. And if you expand VNet1 here, you can see only subnet1 has been selected. So this completes the step to restrict the network connectivity to the storage account only from specific Azure network using service endpoints. But I still have the external IP address of my VMs added in the firewall rules. So I'm going to delete these IP addresses and I'm going to click on save to save the changes. Now I'll go back to home and now I'm going to open up VM1 and click networking under settings and then click the network interface. Scroll all the way down, click on effective routes. Now if I scroll down, I can see there are routes added for service endpoints along with the default routes. Now I'll go back to my bastion session for VM1. So let me reconnect to the file share. All right, it is connected. Let me try to create a text file. I'll say this as text4. I'm going to click file, save, 
and I'm going to save it in the file shape, text4. Click on save. All right. Now let me show you what is there on the VM2. Let me click reconnect. I'll hit refresh. And you can see it is not connecting because we restricted the access only to VM1. And if I go back to my storage account and go under file shares, open file share one, I cannot open it here as well because it says that the storage account is located in a VNet. This is because uh, this web page is opened on a computer which is connected to public network. But if I go to VM1 and go back to Azure portal over there, I will open up the storage account and click on file shares, open file share one, and you can see text4.txt. All right, this concludes the step-by-step -step instructions on how to create a service endpoint. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more videos like these, please subscribe to my channel.